Hello and welcome to our session on MFI's models and methodology. Our learning objectives for this session will be to describe the lending or the group lending methodology in microfinance, explain the main differences between individual lending contracts and group lending, explain how group lending mitigates adverse selection and moral hazard problems, discuss the limitations of group lending, and describe alternative lending mechanisms. In general, microfinance lending models differ typically from the traditional banking lending models. Now, this is because microfinance models are developed out of a need to provide specialized financial services to the poor, mostly because the Western models used by traditional banks were not effective in reaching the poorest of the poor in developing countries. In terms of the popular models developed by MFIs, these include group-based lending, village banking, and individual banking. Now, how does group lending work? In the typical Grameen style, you get a group of about 40 villagers to meet together once every week with a loan officer from the MFI sitting in the middle. Now, the large group of villagers is later subdivided into about eight subgroups each having about five and then each group of five would have a leader now the loan is disbursed to individuals within the group and then this loan officer has the responsibility of recording individual transactions that are made especially in terms of the weekly installments and if there are any savings that the persons per group would want to do now, all these are done in public to make the process as transparent as possible and let the villagers know who is among them is having difficulty. Now, the group lending works by allowing individuals who ordinarily don't have collateral to get together and form groups with the aim of getting the loan. What it does is that as already mentioned, the loans are made individually to the group members. However, everybody within that group is responsible for the repayment of an individual's loan. So what it means is that they have a group responsibility and a joint liability. And then for that reason, they have to have regular group meetings to follow up on anything that's happening within the group. Now, how does the group approach affect the lending? From the lender's perspective, the value lies in the transfer, either in whole or in part, some of the responsibilities to the customers. So, for example, because they don't have information on these uh, villages or poor borrowers, the potential screening of or the screening of potential clients actually falls on the villagers because they get to choose who joins the group of five so that their background information on their friends, family, villagers, or even follow up on by asking others will determine who becomes a client. Then they also follow through with monitoring and also enforcing in the sense that in some cases failure to repay could mean being ostracized from the group, from your society, and facing a number of sanctions from your community. In that, in return for that, then the customers get the loan that would otherwise be inaccessible, or at least not accessible at the very low interest rates they have. The advantages of group lending, one, it offers convenience to the villagers in a similar format like the Eroskas or money lenders. And then transaction costs are also greatly reduced for the loan officers because the implications of chasing up, following up on uh, monitoring, etc., that comes down. And then the screening, the cost of screening, etc., is also reduced. The MFIs use these informations that the borrowers have on each other to resolve the problem of information asymmetry. So like I mentioned earlier, the information that neighbors and friends may have 
on one another becomes the foundation on which the MFI also operates so that the group responsibility plus mitigates lending risk such as moral hazard the risk the moral hazard that uh, monitoring may not be for which reason borrowers could misappropriate funds taken for other purposes also the possibility of adverse selection because the members of the group know who is joining the group the possibility of getting someone who is a bad credit is quite minimized and also the the enforcement the social implications forces persons to make the payments the adverse selection problem usually occurs because lenders are not able to tell risky borrowers from safe borrowers at the very outset so that will lead lending institutions to try and ration their credit or sometimes give high interest rates to compensate for the possibility of having very risky borrowers who are likely to default now when this happens in their ration of credit because they are not too sure who to give credit to or in their charging of high interest rates on who to give credit to results in inefficiency because safe borrowers who ordinarily should not be charged high interest will be deterred from applying for loans in essence what it also means is that not handled well will mean that only persons who are prone to very risky behavior are likely to take on the facility now in terms of group lending it helps by ensuring that because the villagers or the group members have prior information or some extra information on the group members you find risky borrowers having no alternative but to also form a group with other risky types so that that group then can be charged the relevant interest based on the risk profiles so adverse selection is somehow mitigated because in by group lending because group lending then will ensure that relatively similar persons congregate as members of a group so non-risky persons will end up being forming their group while relatively risky persons who also form their group and be dealt with accordingly now overcoming moral hazard usually once the loans have been granted banks or financial institutions face the problems of monitoring borrowers to ensure that the funds are appropriated the way that they are supposed to be appropriated borrowers in this case within the group lending model will monitor each other's choice of projects and inflict penalties on borrowers who have chosen excessively risky projects so in this case the group lending allows the group to step in and operate on behalf of the bank by monitoring their counterparts within the group for this reason the joint responsibility also means that the members will punish shakers who bed in the group with a success risk and also with the peer monitoring group lending members can check the actual revenue realization by their partners for which reason if someone says they are not able to pay the members in the group can actually verify there are limits however to group lending group lending can cause members to actually collude meaning that they come together and decide that okay we are not paying and so that group goes off automatically now in some cases group members may also be unwilling to impose social sanctions upon its members so defaulting members go unpunished there are cases as well where potential borrowers may be so dispersed and highly mobile and so local information can be weak and costly to maintain because now it means that the dispersion of the borrowing group does not allow for you to have enough information on them and trying to keep that information can become costly and then for some as well attending group meetings and monitoring group members can be costly both in terms of time and then moving to the appropriate 
location. Another model that MFI typically employs is the village banking model, and this was pioneered by John Hatch, in, um, who formed Finca in 1984. Now, there, there's a similarity within the village banking model and the group lending. Just like the village banking, the village banking allows, like the group lending, the village banking also gets groups of persons. In this case, it can be around 10 to 50 members. They meet regularly to provide a group for mutual support. But in the some cases, more members of the group don't necessarily choose each other, unlike the group lending where they choose. So sometimes they may not know beforehand who their group members are likely to be. Now, after forming the group, what then happens is, so after forming the group, the, the village banking group becomes more of the bank. They can have bylaws, they do the initial screening, they determine how much of the loan amount goes to individual members within the group, and they do the recording, etc. Even though they have the liaison officer with the MFI who does the coordinating between the banking institution that has given the financing and this village group that has come together to form the village banking group. Now, of course, the individual, as the term goes, is the normal traditional model employed by banks. A number of MFIs are beginning to use the individual lending approaches. So as, as time has gone on, the ability to push to lower costs and diversify has opened doors to individual lending. And usually quite good for successful clients who no longer want to be part of groups and be saddled by the group implications. And also, individual lending is a popular option in specially populated regions or regions with heterogeneous population. Now, another way that MFIs operate is to ensure frequent repayment of installments. So most microfinance contracts are characterized by regular payments that can start as early as one week after disbursement of loans. Now the reason they proceed with these kind of early payments and then frequent repayments is to provide a means to have access to an early warning system because the frequency of it is likely to give a trigger when somebody defaults consistently within that period. Now, the repayment schedule therefore reduces the bank's risk by selecting borrowers. In the long term, it helps them to select borrowers that are more likely to repay loans even if their investments fail. On the flip side, it means that households must have other streams of income on which to draw in order to repay the early installments. Now, they also employ other complementary incentive mechanisms. One, adopting a flexible approach to collateral, meaning that they can take livestock, assets, purchases, with the loans. They're quite flexible in uh, the approaches to collateral. And then they also help borrowers to grow financial collateral, such as their savings schemes, etc. They make public lo uh, the loan repayments public. That, in a way, also provides some kind of a push or incentive for people to make repayments because then their inability to repay becomes public. And then they also target women who, who appear, based on research, to be more reliable with repayments. And then bank staff also proceed to gather information on borrowers, which ultimately help in the MFI disbursement frames. Now that brings us to the end of this session on lending methodologies and approaches. Our review should center around knowing the differences between individual lending contracts and group lending. Explain how group lending mitigates adverse selection and moral hazard problems. 
is cast, the advantages and limitations of group lending, and then also discuss recent evidence on the effect of group lending on low repayment performance. See you in the next session. Enjoy. Bye.